Hey everyone, it's Lee Halliday, and today we have a video where we're going to take this little application which pulls um, some repositories I've starred in GitHub using the GitHub GraphQL API. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a few filters to the top here to allow me to filter out uh, by language used. So I could click the HTML button and it would just show me repositories with HTML or TypeScript or whatnot. Um, that's pretty simple in and of itself, but the way we're going to approach it is we're going to store which um, which language I've filtered by in link state, in the Apollo link state library. So this is an alternative to using uh, just plain old React set state or using MobX or using Redux. It's sort of allowing you to keep all of your data, both uh, external from APIs, but also your client data in one place and access it via GraphQL. So let's get started here. Diving into the code, um, right now we've got this starred repositories um, component, which is the what does all the work of querying these repos. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to create a new one and we'll just call it um, filters. Good name for it. All right. And we're going to import React from React. And we're going to do a functional component because I want to use hooks for this um, with Apollo rather than using the query and mutation um, components. I've found that they're a lot easier to work with and your code ends up looking a lot cleaner. So if you haven't worked with that before, it will be a good video to learn that as well. So we'll export default function filters and here's where we'll put our code. So the first thing I need to do is I need access to all of these same repositories so that I can get the languages from each of them and come up with like a unique list of all the languages that are in this result set. So the first thing I need to do is I need to actually perform the query. So to do that, I already have the query written over here in starred repositories. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to cut that out from this one. And I'm going to create a new file called queries where we're just going to export this, this query from the file. So I need to import uh, GQL from GraphQL tag. And now I can use this same query in a number of different places. So the first thing I need to do is just fix up this code. So we'll import our start repos query from queries. And it still works great. So I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to come back to filters and paste this in. So now I have the query, but now I need to actually perform the query. And for that, we're going to use the use query hook, um, which comes from this React Apollo hooks library I've been trying out, which works pretty great. So we will import that, use query from uh, what is it? React Apollo hooks. And what the query returns is some data. So const data is use query. And to the use query hook, we need to pass the query that we want to execute. And then the second parameter are any like variables or settings or on complete, uh, just anything you want to do. Um, after this query completes. So we will pass some variables and I think the only one I need is the number of repositories to pull. Yes, num repos. So we'll say num repos is 25 like that. Okay. So first thing, let's just get this um, showing something even though it's not actually showing our data yet. But we'll console.log the data. And we'll just say filters are here. Okay, so we haven't actually used this anywhere. So let's go back to our app component, which is what is currently responsible for showing all of these repositories here. And just above the start repos, we'll put our filters. So we'll come up to the top and we'll import it. There's filters from filters. 
like that. And we have our nice little div here that shows us filters. So let's come into the console here and we'll take a look at the data and we'll try to figure out how we can extract from it the uh, the different languages used across all of the different repositories. So if we access viewer, I'm actually just going to start writing this as we go. I'll create a little function here uh, called um, extract languages where we'll pass it um, the data returned and its job will be to return the languages. So here we'll just say languages equals extract languages and we'll pass it the data. Like that, leave the console.log for now. Okay, so we've access to viewer. We'll come in here, data.viewer. And viewer has starred repositories. And that has nodes. Okay. So if we were to map over this, this would be each of the repositories that we have starred. So we'll do that. So we'll map over this and we'll call it a repo node like that. Okay, so what do we want to get from all of these repositories? We want to get the languages used. So we step into one of these repository nodes, we see that we have a languages property. So we'll just come in here and what we're actually going to do is we're going to return another map. So repo node.languages and languages has an array of nodes and we will map these. So this is a lang node. And what do we want from each of these language nodes? We want the name of it. So Ruby or JavaScript or whatever. So we can just say that we want lang node, like lang node dot name. Okay. So I need to call this, um, we'll just say all languages. And we'll console.log it for now to see what it looks like. Okay. So what we've got is an array of arrays, which is, um, so for the first repository, it had Ruby and HTML, second had JavaScript, third had these three. So we need to flatten this. So we can just easily do that by calling flat on the end of this with the map returns. And now we end up with all of the repositories used across, sorry, all the languages used across all the repositories I've starred. Um, but there's a lot of duplicates here. There's JavaScript, 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 JavaScript everywhere. So we need to um, have a unique list of languages and it's pretty easy to do that. All we're gonna do is we'll return it, first of all, and we want an array and we will make this array from a dot, 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 new set. So first of all, let's just make sure it's working by console.logging the languages. And you can see that here we have now a unique list of all the languages used. Um, looks like this code is being uh, run a few times, so hopefully it's not making too many requests. Let's see. Looks like it's only making one request to the actual API. It's just it's re-rendering maybe a bit more than it should, so that's fine for now. Okay, so we have all, a, a unique list of the languages. So now we just want to show them on the screen. Uh, but just getting back here, how did I get a unique list? Basically, I converted this array of uh, duplicate languages into a set. And a set is like an array, except it contains no duplicate values. So once we have a set, I use the uh, dot 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 to extract that out and put it into an array again so that we can work with an array instead of a set. And that's just a quick little way to, to get a unique list of the values from an array. So now we have languages, let's map them so that we can display a button for each of the languages. So we'll do languages.map 
and language. And so each of these languages we want just a little button. Um, so for that we will do button, key will do the language name, and value will just be the language. Uh, key is unique because we made them unique here. Okay. Boom. So now we have nice little buttons. I had styled all buttons on the page before, so we get that nice little hover effect. Um, one for each of the languages um, used by the repositories I have starred. Okay, so now we need to get to the actual part of the code that uses uh, React links, uh, sorry, Apollo link state. So just for now, I'm going to add an on-click button to this, or an on-click uh, handler. And we will add a little uh, console.log of the language that was clicked. So here is where we'll make a call eventually to set the language that was selected. So Ruby, HTML, JavaScript. So it appears to be working. So this bit of the code is basically fine for now. We'll, we'll be coming back to it once we implement our React link state. So let's get to that now. To do that, I'm going to close everything, and I need to make some modifications to the setup of the Apollo client. First things first, I need to add a new library, and that is yarn add Apollo link state. Okay. So when that finishes being added to our repository, which shouldn't take too long, we'll just start this up again. Okay. We need to go in here and import it at the top of our client. So we'll import, and the function you want to import from it is called set client state, I believe. It will tell me if I'm wrong. From Apollo link state. Cool. And in here, we just need to put it below our cache because we actually need access to our cache to make this work correctly. So we'll call it um, our state link. And it's equal to set client state. And we need to pass a number of options into this function. Before we even do that, let's just before, so we don't forget, take our state link, come down here and put it into the Apollo client uh, link chain. So I'm going to put it right here, um, sort of the error handling will happen first, then any of our, our state link, and then after that it will go through the auth link and then the actual HTTP link, which is any GraphQL queries that need to go out to the internet to talk to the API. So that would be the actual GitHub one itself. Okay. So the first thing is we need to give it our cache. This is where it's going to store the uh, local client state. And the next thing we need to do is some resolvers. So this is, a resolver is a word you're familiar with if you've used with Redux. It's basically little functions which tell it how to handle mutations and queries to access the data that is stored in our Apollo um, cache right here. So we are going to be writing a mutation. And the mutation we will be writing will be called uh, set language filter. Because as you, it's failing right now, but as you click those languages, it's going to be calling this mutation. Okay, so here we give it an arrow function. And the first thing it receives is, I forget because I've honestly never used it. Um, if we come up here and look at the documentation, even in the documentation, they're always not using it. Um, they do explain somewhere what it is, but we do not need it, so I'm not going to worry about it. So the second um, parameter are all of the variables that have been passed in. So we're going to receive the language that the user clicked. And the third argument here, what we need to extract from is the cache. Um, so that we can write some new data to it. When the mutation's called, we'll update the cache's data to contain the uh, language that was filtered. So the first thing it will do is, we'll just create a little data object here. And 
what this will look like is our data is going to look like filters and filters will have the language that was filtered so we don't need to say language language because of ES6 I mean like that is unnecessary so we'll just say language and if you've worked with Apollo before you'll know that sort of as the data comes back and it gets stored in the cache it needs to be normalized in a certain way and what that means is it sort of breaks out all the nesting and it loads, it keeps each type of data sort of in its own record. And it needs a property so that it can differentiate between the different data types. And that's called the type name, underscore, underscore, type name. So we'll just say that the data we're storing here in our filters is type name filters. So once we've got our data set up, we can write that to the cache. So I think it's cache.writeData, and we'll pass in our data. So there's one thing that's going to cause an error, and uh, that is we need to return null. Um, if you wanted to return data from this function being called, you could, but in our case, we don't really need it. So you need to return null, otherwise it's going to complain um, if you haven't done that. So we've set up our resolver mutation to set the language filter, but we can also set the default data. So before anyone's clicked a button, what is the value? Um, just scroll down here so I can remember what it's called. So defaults, simple enough. So defaults, and we've got our filters data which will have language is just null at the beginning, hasn't been filtered to anything, and the type name is filters. Cool. So I think this is pretty much all that needed to be done to set up uh, Apollo link state. Let's make sure it still loads. No, set client state. All right, so I'm obviously wrong. What is it called? With client state. I knew it would tell me. All right, so it's working now. We've got our Apollo link state mutation set up and we've set up our default value as well, but we haven't actually used it yet. So let's go tie it into our code now so that we, when we click one of these buttons, it will um, call this mutation to update the data stored in our, in our cache, the state. So we'll come back to our filters code and we will use the use mutation hook, which makes it a heck of a lot easier than um, wrapping a mutation with a render prop, with a query, with a render prop, um, gets a little bit ugly. So what we can just do is we can say const um, set language filter, I believe is what it was called. Yep. And we'll say that it's uh, use mutation. And here we need to pass in our uh, mutation to this function. So we can just set that up right up at the top here. So we're going to import GQL from uh, GraphQL tag, and then we need to set up our mutation. So we will call it uh, set language filter. It's a little long. Let's go with this. So GQL, and inside we want to say that we have a mutation and it is called the set language filter. This is just, it's not the actual mutation being called, it's just the name we're gonna to give to it as we call this. So this is going to receive a language which is a string and uh, the string doesn't need to be present. Um, it could be null because maybe we wanna clear it and set it back to nothing. So in here, in our mutation code, we can put the actual call to the mutation. So here we use the name here that we set up. So this is the name of our mutation set language filter. And when we call it, we can come back here and we can see that it's expecting to receive a language variable. So we'll pass it that and the value will be coming from the one we defined up here as a string. 
So how does it know that this mutation is a client or a link state mutation rather than needing to go out on the internet and talk to some API? It knows by passing the at client directive. So having set that up, we can come down here and pass our mutation in here. So now whenever we call this little function that was returned by the use mutation hook, it will trigger a call to our mutation by running this code here. So instead of console.logging, we'll call this and we want to pass in our variables, specifically the language variable. So let's see if it, so we don't really know if it's working or not, but we at least, uh, it's not giving us any errors. We can come back here and uh, maybe in here, we'll just console.log the cache. So if we look at the cache, we can actually go down and access the data. And here's where I was sort of talking about how it, this is internally how Apollo stores the data. And see here, it's got type names for language connection, uh, language, start repository. So this is all the data that came back from the GitHub API. But right up here at the top, you can see our Ruby. So I've clicked it and the type name is filters. So if I just click it over to JavaScript, um, I don't know if it would be JavaScript yet because I, yep, so there we go. So it is updating the, the state inside of our cache. So that means the mutation's working correctly. But now we just need to do a little work to actually use and pull the data out of our state so that we can, um, maybe we'll bold the one that the user selected and we also need to filter the list and then we are done. So let's do the bold part first. So what I'm going to do is come back to this query and I'm gonna actually add a second part to this. So this viewer part goes out on the internet and pulls data from the GitHub repository, but I can actually ask it for filters. And I can say that the filters are at client directive, meaning don't go out on the internet, deal with it, um, look first into the link state. And the reason it knows that is because we've included this state link here and it will uh, know to pull from our local cache. Now we didn't need to define a query here because if you're just accessing the data exactly how it is stored in your cache, you don't need to provide any queries. You could always um, define them so that you could maybe receive some variables or modify the data before returning it back in different ways. But in this case here, we're just gonna access it directly. So we're gonna access filters from the client and we want the language. So now if we come back here to our filters code, um, maybe we'll put in a variable, the selected language. So we've got data, which came back from this query dot filters dot language. And maybe we can just console.log it to make sure it's working. So HTML, JavaScript, make file. So it is working correctly. We're querying out the data from our local, um, local state. So now we just need to put a little if statement here to change how this button's rendered based on if the language matches, as we're looping through, matches the selected language. So I'll just do this up here. So if language is equal to the selected language, we'll maybe put it inside of a strong tag. Otherwise, we'll just show it normal. Okay, so now, nice, it's bolding the one that I've selected. And one last thing, let's put a clear button. So outside of our, <laughs> out of disk space, that's, all right, maybe we can get some more. All right, good enough. So outside of our map, just below it, we wanna check if we've 
selected a language, so if it's not null, we want to put a button that says uh, clear. And this button will have the same sort of on click, so we'll just copy that down. Except instead of passing in like a, an actual language, we're going to pass in the value of null. Doesn't like that because of that D. Cool. So there we go. Refresh this. Postscript is selected. I can click clear to wipe that out again. All right, the last thing we just need to do is the filtering. So we'll go. Now, this component is completely done, I believe. We'll go back to our starred repositories, which is the code responsible for showing. And we'll just create a little function const um, filter repositories. Too long. Filter repos. So it's going to receive two things. It's going to receive the data and it will receive the, um, the selected language. So let's call this here. Um, let's put in a variable, the selected language. So what was that? Data.filters.language. And then we want to pass, um, Maybe instead of passing the entire data block, we'll just pass it in from this point here. So what would this be, the repo nodes? So we'll say filter repos, passing in the repo nodes and the selected language. So it will return us back um, a filtered list of these repository nodes that we can then map over and render a repository for each one. So we got to do a little bit of filtering now. Um, so what we want to do is we want to take these repo nodes and we want to filter them. So this would receive the repo node. And so we want to return the result of filtering these. And the way we do that is we want to look through all of the repos languages and see if one of those languages includes um, the selected language. So first, let's just map those languages so we have an array that sort of looks like um, Ruby, JavaScript sort of thing like that. So we want to go repo node dot nodes so now we have the language nodes and we'll map them so lang node and it will return the name of that language so this code right here has produced us an array that sort of looks like that and then we want to check if this includes the selected language okay so essentially what this is doing, uh, one more time, maybe we should check if it, if it works first, right? So it's returning nothing, and I think that's because the selected language is null. So if that's the case, if not selected language, let's just return all of the nodes as they are. So here's all of them. If I click um, TypeScript, it filters down, shell, CSS. So it is seems to be working. I can clear it to get back to the list of all of them. So what it's doing again is it's it's filtering these repository nodes and what filter wants is basically returning a boolean for each one of whether to include it in the filtered list or not. And the way we know whether to include it or not is getting an array of all the languages used on this repository and checking if that array includes the language that we have selected, which is being stored in our um, Apollo link state. So that's the whole application. If we just refresh this, we're displaying a list of unique languages used in all the repositories I've starred. We can click on each one, which calls the mutation set language filter and so when it's called we're passing in the language here actually that was clicked as a variable 
So that mutation was set up here with the width client state um, function. We've defined the mutation set language filter, which receives a language. We're just setting up some data, then writing that to our cache. And we set up some defaults as well so that when it loads, it's null. Um, remember, we had to set the type name so that uh, the Apollo library knows how to store it in the, in the cache. And then we were able to, to pull that data back out of our link state by appending to our query that we want to access the filters which come from our client using the at, uh, at client directive. We just wanted to access the language. So it's pretty cool here because you can imagine you could have multiple filters like, um, I don't know, whatever else, uh, recency, um, num repos we want to pull. So we could have a whole bunch of different filters and depending which filter you need, you can just pull it out because it is GraphQL. So you can access just the data that you need. So once we pulled out those, the, uh, the language that's being filtered, we used it in two ways. We used it um, both in our starred repositories repo. So we accessed that selected language and we ran all of the repositories through our filter repos function, which handled returning only the ones that matched our selected language. And we also used it here in the filters as well, the selected language so that we could choose whether or not we wanted to bold the language as it's looping and mapping through all of those languages. So that's the video for today, showing how you can use the uh, Apollo link state library to store all of your data inside of the Apollo cache and access it using uh, GraphQL mutations and queries. So that keeps all your data in a single place. Um, maybe uh, getting rid of the need to use a uh, React set state or a use state hook or a MobX or Redux. As you can see, it's obviously not as simple as using um, set state if you just need some local state for a single component. But it's a pretty good alternative if you need to share some state across uh, all the components in your application. All right, hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Bye.